This is the Cats and Pudding Podcast. A melting pot of pudding. And now, here's Jen. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Cats and Pudding. And today, I have a special guest, Chauvin. See, I said it right. I didn't say Chauvin, even though it's, it's written as sh- with a B, but the B is silent. It's like Siobhan, yeah. but it's Siobhan. <laughs> it's the Irish. It makes no sense. So the B is silent. Yes. So the bitch is silent, or the there's b- just a B? The bitch is back, and there's going to be trouble. <laughs> Welcome to my show. Thanks I'm so for happy having you're me. Here no, I'm today. thrilled. I'm thrilled to be here. You're amazing. I've been I've been watching you for I don't want to say years. 150 years. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you're beautiful. Oh my and gosh. I, and your red hair is natural. Oh, it is. It is. So you're a ginger. Yeah, I'm a ginger. Are we allowed to say that? Is that I know. No, correct? no. Listen, please mo- mock me, and I, I, we, we got to start mocking more, don't you think? Uh, listen, I, you're a comedian too, right? Yeah. So how can you even be a comedian in this climate now? It's, you can't. It's, it's crazy. You can't. It's crazy. I'm gonna have become a ballerina because of it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna change it up. <laughs> that might be comical, but too, I have right? bad feet. I'll, so I got to think of something else. <laughs> I have rhythm though. I think you could maybe pull just it off, a though. maybe just a jazz dancer. I think you could totally pull th- it off. I think you could. All right. I think you have it in you to pull it Thanks off. for the confidence. Yeah. <laughs> I totally have a vote of confidence in you. So tell me, tell me about, so I want to bring you back to, you are on Saturday Night Live. Yes. Um, and now you're more into acting now. Yes. Right. So you've been in a quite, a, quite a few shows. Yes. Where did you get your start? I got my start in the third grade. I was the last wheel of the of the train in the proud train in Casanova, New York. I wanted to be the conductor, but they wouldn't let the girls try out for the conductor in those days. In this day and age, they shut the school down. Oh, so I, I ended up being the wheel, and and I knew I I had I had the the um the drive the to- drive, and also I got very very bad reviews from the sixth grade class who said, you know. Why was the wheel going so fast in the caboose? The train would have derailed. So I was like, the hell with them. <laughs> no, so. Your first your first bad review. But you know yeah, what? No bad press is. is no, no. Even bad press is good press. That's right. right that's right. So you no, know, basically what happened, fast forward, um, right near actually where you're filming, I was a receptionist at a law firm about a block away. And, um, but I went to school for acting. You know, I went I, and, and everything. And I was ready to quit. Mm-hmm. I was about 28. And um, I got into an improv group. It's called Who's on First on 65th and First. I've heard of that. It was, it, it, I think it's a chicken store now. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so sad. And so um, anyway, somebody bodega. said, why don't you write a one-woman show? And so I did. And long and short of it is um, Seinfeld came and SNL came. Wow. Yeah. So so I got on Seinfeld as Elaine's roommate. Yes. And then I flew to New York to audition and got on SNL. Thank God That's for the like one woman show. Two iconic shows, like Seinfeld was like the best show in in oh, history. It was, it was awesome. My favorite comedy. Yeah. Probably. Well, and you know what's interesting is that you know they worked so hard. At that. I mean, talk about committed actors. Yes. I mean, they would really work at making. They were serious, serious business. Although Jerry, <laughs> he used to when he'd do my scene, like there's the camera, he'd be like. I'd be like, why aren't you looking at my head? He's like, because I'll burst out laughing. So I was like, well, then I'm going to laugh. You're not looking at my head. But anyway, so yeah, no, I was lucky. How I was lucky. hard was it not to laugh in some of oh, those scenes? Because I would have been laughing all day. It was insane. And then I was Kramer's girlfriend. Oh, my God. And he's like, I brought in some African music for us to practice. And I was like, huh? How about we just learn our lines? But I was like, you know, I was in a- Was he more improv? Because I feel yeah, like- Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was very improv. I, this reminds me of the Merv Griffin set, that which was one of my favorite episodes. Yes, was when he took the, he found the Merv Griffin set like in the garbage and he puts it in his apartment and everybody that was coming in, it, he would like sit with them and he was the so interviewer. Funny. Yes. And he would, they would come in and like he would talk to his friends like they were on an interview yeah. on a talk show, which is hysterical. I was obsessed, by the way, with the Merv Griffin show when I was young. Oh, me too. Like most kids were outside playing. And I was like, I got to watch Merv. I know. He was, and he was very wealthy. Like of how I like how did he become so freaking away? Well, like I a remember when I moved to LA, I only lived there for two years because I really didn't fit in. Like I wore a bathing cap in the pool and stuff. He'd be like, You're not from here. I was like, No, no, I gotta move. Anyway, but I remember they were like, There's Merv Griffin's house. I remember it was a spectacular house up off of Fairfax, like at the top of the top hill. And I was like, He did all right for himself. Yeah, he did all right. He did all right for himself. He did all right for himself. He was he was he was big. That was like for the younger the younger viewers. Yeah, he's like you're like say if you were watching like a Joe Rogan like that was him. Yeah, like he was just yeah. amazing. Like everybody tuned in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night. He was big. He was really good. So, uh, did you ever meet Merv Griffin? I did not. No, 
He's it. He was just. I remember watching him at night, like watching SNL at night. Like I would sneak down to go watch SNL because my brothers and sisters were all older than me. Oh yeah. So I would be watching John Belushi and Jane Curtin and oh my oh, god, are they all the all I the used to crawl. I, I would crawl on my hands and knees because my father was like, "You're not watching that." We we're Catholics, so we're like it's dirty. And I would literally like, like it was a covert operation. I'd be like, like a worm, like. Mm. I'm getting to that TV and I'm watching it. And then I'd get caught. And he, I think my father actually thought it was funny. Yeah, like, probably because you had to watch, because you had guts to go. Like, yeah. Am I getting it? Because I know when I was little, it was like, well, what was the range of me being, What's getting the a beating? Like, is it worth get getting the beating. the beating or getting punished? So I would weigh out my options. Throw you a beating. Right. You know what? Is it worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. I'm I doing know, it. I or, know. It's, nah, it's not worth it, guys. I'm not it's doing it. so true. Right? Yeah. I remember one time I stole my father's Cadillac and I, and my best friend Mary and I, we were only like, 15 and we had a pack of cigarettes and you know, I'm from out in the sticks. Oh my God. And I was, I picked her up and I was like, Oh, there's two people walking. I was like, Oh my God, that's my parents. I am screwed. And so I just beeped oh, and waved. You had to I was like, I'm dead. Who were they like, Oh my, like they did a double take. I think my father always thought, huh? She finally it. got it. Yes. She finally got away <laughs> with like, it. He's like, is she, she like me? He was probably proud of you. I think he way. thought it was funny deep down, but I'd get in a lot of trouble. Yes. My, I remember when I took my brother's car, like he wanted <laughs> to be mad at me, but it was so hilarious because he caught me and he opened up the car door when yeah. I was driving it and I drove away from him because I was so scared. <laughs> but he was like, actually, like, I don't know if he was proud of me, but I think That's he was, thought thing. it was funny that I, I did same, it. I have three kids. I'm the same way. I'm like, huh? Uh, like I, I remember going to my son's room. And I'm like, okay, there's a lot of towels in this bed. He jumped out the window. But note to self, don't leave the screen next to the bed when you jump out the window. And then part of you is like, he's huh, got a lot of guts. Smart. Yeah. Are you are you one of those parents too? Like if my if my kids would get like a phone call home oh. or something, I would be the parent that would be laughing that they did something funny. Like No, when I tell you the I, principal I would be, yeah. had a hotline to my house yeah. every Friday. Speaking of gingers, uh, one time my son wouldn't know one thing about science or Punnett Square. To one time he said to this girl, you know, if you marry, if you end up marrying your boyfriend, your kids are going to be gingers. And the principal goes, um, Mrs. Hogan, this is Mr. Beep. And he said, you know, your son uh, made fun of so-and-so. And he said her kids are going to be gingers. I said, have you seen the color of my hair? <laughs> I was like, what? It's it's almost a certainty that it's going to happen. Yeah, and like, I was you like, were I was be like if kids somebody about, if they're offended by that, what is going on? on with this? I know. And now it's even 20 times worse. Oh, I could never have kids. If I, if I had a kid now, like, I know what's going to happen when I have my grandchildren, how I would be. I, I can't even fathom no. about even. Look. People got to start laughing at themselves. Oh, please. Bit. And they got to get a sense of humor. Yeah. Like, no, it's insane. Like, I had a phone I, I, Half the th things I say are wrong. My kids are like, mom. I, like, me what? too. I'm totally not politically correct. I say it how it is. Me too. I, I can't help it. I'm Italian. I'm Sicilian. It just comes out of my mouth. I can't help it. Well, they keep changing up the rules too. You don't know what you're saying half the time and what, what you're supposed to say and not say. Exactly. Right. You, you you can't get it. Listen, there I'm should old. Be like, there I, should be classes. Yes, there should be a classes of what to say like, and not to say. And refreshers. We'd still, we'd still say the wrong thing anyway. I know. What it matter? Because they would change it like it's the next week. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's awful. And but people, for comedians like for, for for people like you who are, it's it's so I feel it's so hard to do that these days because you you the one thing you can say somebody's always offended. And it's always the person that it's not about that they're they're offended for somebody else. I know. Like what do you care? Like if yeah. they're not offended. My, What's remember the Joker when 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 the guy says why so serious? Yes, yes. Well, it was the Joker that said it, didn't he? <laughs> why One so of those serious. people. Yes, but it's like why is everybody so serious? I know. Come on, you gotta laugh. You gotta. It's it's not it's not like like too much. Yeah. Like if, if that offends you, like I it's said, gonna, it's gonna it's gonna even out though. It's got to. And no, it needs to. I think it's starting to go back the other way. It's I was got just to. talking to because it's it's ridiculous. Now. Yeah. It's so it's just it's like, dude, get a helmet, go get a hug. Like, come on, like, what right. are you doing for? Like, what is this? Right, right, right. You can't get upset over the littlest, littlest thing. No, you can't because you'll be upset all the time. Right, you're always going to be upset and always be disappointed all the time. Exactly. So what are you going to do? Just exactly. lock yourself in a bubble and no, you can't. The end of it. I, you can't. It's too much. But you, I believe you're right. I see it starting to go back. It has to. People have lost their minds. Yeah. Oh, it's 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 crazy. Yeah. And I think it's hard for our generation because I think that our generation, Generation X, like we we were like the crazy ones. It went from like the parents were home every day with the kids, the, the mom was home cooking dinner. Then all of a sudden it was like, okay, stay home by yourself. Here's the key to, to the house. 
<laughs> and the Generation X is what, that, right? Am I It's wrong? true. It, 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 you know, we didn't know what the heck we were doing either. Why did they leave us alone? Uh, but you want me to tell you something? We were resourceful. My kid, if yeah. I left her alone in the house, she would not know. The only thing she would be able to do is order Uber Eats. It's she true. She wouldn't be able to cook. I My husband's such stuff. a good cook because, you know, it was it was survival of the fittest. That's the truth. Yeah. If you didn't get home first to eat the food, everybody else was oh eating. Oh my God. It, it, it was, I used to, my, <laughs> I was such a sweet tooth and I was kind of like the runt of the litter. And I was like, mom, seriously. She's like, my mother brought the worst sweets too. She'd be like, you can have this fit, pa- pack of fake Newtons and put them in your room. I'm like, oh, I don't want those. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> Can't you give me chips ahoy? Like, Let's really, scale like, up. I got the scale lit. up. Would you, would you buy these on sale, like two for a dollar, and now I'm getting them now, and they're probably stale? They're the worst sweets. It's, they shouldn't even qualify under sweets. No, they shouldn't. Although, once in a while, I do like a Fig Newton, but it's not something that I would like go to the store and say, hey, let me go buy a Fig Newton. No, I think I, I think I have PTSD from Fig Newtons, because mo- I'm one of five, and literally every single day of my life, I got peanut butter jelly and a Fig Newton and an apple. And I was like, I hate apples, I hate Fig Newtons, and I hate peanut butter jelly. That's it for you. It's terrible. You probably used, never had it in my, your house. My best friend... Her, she was the youngest of seven and, and there was a little break, like she was kind of a mistake. So her mother used to make these things called Congo bars and I used to steal them every lunch. And then, they, then her mother was like, I- I'll just put in Just one put an Siobhan. extra one in for you. Yeah. For Siobhan. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was nice of her. I know. You know, did, well, did your mother work? No. No. She, but she had five kids. Yeah. She's working her rear end off. I know. That's, but nobody, and I was just talking about that too. People do not realize how hard. Oh. The new generation, they want to say, oh, a woman should work and work. Mother, being a mother is probably the hardest it's job so in the world. Hard. I would a bring, CEO could not run a household yeah. the way a mother runs a household. When I would get movie jobs, I would bring my kids because I would be guilted, Catholic Aww. guilt. So I'd always bring them. <laughs> so And I didn't want them to like be like talking about me when I got older. Like she didn't, she was never home. So I brought them and I would like have babies. They would be in like therapy. Yeah, like they, yeah they were, I was like, don't blame it on me. She left don't me blame to be on SNL. Me. Yeah, don't blame it on me that you're a weirdo. <laughs> blame it on yourself. So anyway, so, but I would, I would be like, this is so much easier than staying at home. Because I was like, at home I'd be like, well, I made macaroni and cheese again. And the rotisserie chicken's gone. I was the worst cook. My poor kids. The worst. But I bet you that they 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 do come home and actually get to make macaroni and cheese Be, every people, once in a while. Kids will come home and be like, Mrs. Hogan, can you tell my mother how you make your macaroni and cheese? I go, yeah, you ready? <laughs> Boil water, take the cheese out of the plastic. When the when those noodles are soft, get the water out, put it in and stir it up. It was literally probably wow, like- that how you do it? Agent Orange. It was so, <laughs> so bad. But there like was chemical a craft. cheese. It was that a craft. was a craft. Uh-huh. It was government cheese. Government cheese. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was terrible. But you want to know something? I like craft better than Velveeta for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, Maybe yeah. it's because we were raised on it. Yeah. And the plastic. Yeah, and it was so salty. So salty. Right? That would put more salt on it. Right. My kids, and I'm sure, have made- Major that's medical why problems. my kids have high blood pressure now. I know. In the freaking back of my I had no that and Goya black beans and rotisserie <laughs> chicken, like babies. I'd put it on the. I'd put it and they'd be like, "We're having this again." I'm like, "Do you have any ideas? Do you have any recipes? Do you have anything?" Well, well you're probably good. Home. I was Italian, so I had. I always had oh, to yeah. make a big dinner, and I had to make homemade macaroni and cheese. My kids were on the other spectrum; they wouldn't eat leftovers. Well, my you. sister married an Italian. Yeah, so you know. So she learned about the seven fishes and the whole deal. But then she said she got mixed up about affection because I was Irish. You're like, hi, I love you. Yeah. You're like, oh, did I say I love you? And I'm not hugging you. So she, sh- I'll never forget when she first married him, a guy delivered a couch to her house and she kissed him because she said, oh my God, this is so nice. I love it. And she, she calls me, she goes, oh my God, I got so mixed up, Sharon, because, you know, we are raised to be so cold. And now that I'm married to an Italian, all they do is hug and kiss and, and everything. It's so true. I hug the couch delivery guy. <laughs> Like, she stop. was probably so happy it was a nice couch that she probably hugged She me. was. She's thrilled. I I I hug I used to hug my cleaning lady when she used to come in because I was happy. <laughs> I, to see her. Listen, that's that's the happiest day when they come. And my plumber too. I'm like, thank oh God. My God. <laughs> thank God you're here. No, the cleaning ladies forget it. Yes. That's, they're the lifesavers. They really are. Yeah. I I have to tell you, when I stood home with my kids in, in the big it was now I own my I own a few businesses. So I could tell you, like you said, being a mom was so much harder than going to work. Yes. I much rather go to work. And be home because I would be mommy dearest. No more wire hangers. I would oh. totally be like that because I would want to be. It would be have to be clean. Everything had to be clean to be perfection. No toys on the floor. Like I oh, was that oh, type. Oh, oh, oh. See, and I, I was, was that fanatic. I was not that like, person, cleaner. but I was always exhausted. And I'd be like, you guys, you got to sleep. But I was up with a newborn. They'd be like, look at like I'm three, and I'm five. I don't really care. Like I was like a weirdo. I was like, seriously, mommy got no sleep. 
<laughs> you were trying to play I, on their guilt. I was like, like, could somebody give me a break? It was ridiculous. <laughs> Well, I know when we were, when I had children, like we didn't have, I'm sure you know this, I, the swings, you just have to wind them oh. up. They didn't, they weren't, they weren't electric. There was only three speeds. Turn them on. Yes. Yeah, because my daughter, <laughs> Bernadette was insane. She'd be like, <laughs> I remember my mother came down to help me. I was living in New York City and Bernadette was, a t she didn't sleep. And my mother said, oh God, I wish that had that swing had more than three speeds. It, and, or that you would just wind it up and it would only last for like 20 minutes. So you yes. would get like a 20 yes. minute nap. It took five minutes to go to sleep and then you would only get like a 10 minute oh, cat nap awful. while they were there. And all of a sudden it would stop and it'd be like, oh. I, now, but it the, was a lifesaver. But, but they all have so much equipment now. Yes. Like if I had that video camera, because I would sneak in to make sure they were still alive. <laughs> and if I had that video camera, there would be different people today. So yeah. would I. So I'd I probably know. look better. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that too. I think if I didn't hear them cry, I'd be like, "Why are they not crying?" I know. Are you awake? And I'd be I know. Waking them up. I'm like, Why are they so startled all the time now? Because I used to wake They're them up. Startled. Are you breathing? <laughs> are you okay? I'm like, yeah, mom. I was sleeping, mom. I was sleeping. I'm like, all right. I, I want to make sure you were breathing and not choking in your sleep. Because they scared. It. That was our generation. Yes. Got weirder than our parents because our parents didn't even care. No, they didn't. They'd be like, look, if we, we choked no it up, I got a lot of other kids left. Dude, we had oh, no car oh, seats. We they would let us in the back of a station wagon, a big, a talking on a station wagon. They had like a window, like the size of the screen. Yeah. And we would be like hanging out there. We we're like four years old. And our parents, oh. we'd be going over big bumps. We could go, we could go right out the window. That's we with our generation. We drove to Florida. No helmets. My, terrible. My father put a mattress this thick. It was like, I don't know what it was supposed to be. To drive to Florida, which is the worst thing in the world. You're like, you know what? I, I heard it's hot there. I'd I know rather, it's nice, but I'd rather stay home. This is this ride is so. Me bad. and my sister did not get along because we got stuck in a ride to Florida once a year. Oh, we would we have major That's major punch outs. Other. Yeah, major. Or my sister be like, my sister maybe like, like it'd be so jammed. And she goes, "You have a black head. Can I get it?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> She's like, "Please." I'm like, "No." It was just go over. And then she's like, "Mom, can I have a bobby pin?" And then she then she like work out. I'd be like, "Ow!" And my father be like. Be quiet, would you? <laughs> With the stupid map, like we'd always be, it was awful. We had to look at maps. Imagine. Maps. Ma we had no map. We, 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 then we got map quest as we got old. We had to print it out. Wait, like, wait, but do like anybody who lived in LA, it was the, the something book. And I was like, I can't turn it. I would just ask, I would be like, excuse me, like over and over and over. Directions. Yeah. And my father or my brother or whoever I was driving or whatever, man would never want to stop and ask directions. No, men never want to stop. No way. Because that's remember, a sign of weakness. For sign of weakness. Reason. Right. One time we went to uh, Vermont to ski and we, my father, we were blasting. We had one CD, not CD, it was a tape of Bye Bye Miss American Pie. <laughs> we must have sang it probably 500 times when Great. my father's like, Jesus Christ, we're in, we were, he drove two hours the wrong way. I think we were in New Hampshire. I don't even know where we were. I was like, oh, why didn't you ask? <laughs> It's it was it's because we were looking at maps then, and if you were, yeah. drove in the middle of the night, you couldn't. There you was couldn't no. See, there was, it was terrible. Unless you had a flashlight, you couldn't like see anything. Yeah. Like we had it was phones. We had nothing. Bad. It so was, bad. But we survived. We did. We did survive. Mm -hmm. Right. If our friends, we were out all day, and I'll say this, to everybody, right. We would still all find each other if we met, right? Yeah. At night, we didn't call out. We none of us had a phone call. None of us had a phone. None of us had a. We didn't even have beepers then. We would still find each other. When my right? when I got my wisdom teeth out, I'm the second of five. And my mother's like, oh, God, you look terrible. Okay, well, I got to, you know, should take care of the other kids. And she's like, I'm going to give you this cowbell. <laughs> and if, you, if you're if you in pain, you know, hit, go like this. So I was like, oh, my God, I'm in so much pain. And I hear my mother say, what is that ringing? That is so annoying. Does anybody else hear that? I was like, oh, forget it. But no, they just, they didn't coddle you. So then no, I think didn't. that's why show business was so much easier for me because I was like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in a house with If I go to an audition, nobody kids. pays attention to me. It doesn't matter. If I, I'm used to it. I'm good. Yeah. I'm all right. I'm not insulted. I get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm good. See you later. Yeah. You, you, you know what? It, 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 it um, prepared you. It did. Because you know what? They would just let us. They're like, okay, do this. You're fine. Exactly. It was so great. It was great. It was. And we were resourceful. I think the kids today are more savvy and like a computer savvy. Yes, absolutely. Right. But everything else. You don't, you don't see them out much. Did you ever get a ride anywhere when you were a kid? N no. Ever? Oh my God. We used to, I'm from, don't forget, upstate New York. And you're from upstate New York. Freezing to death for the bus. We like. And we go, B-U-S, over and over and over again. Cause you're like, I'm so cold if I don't do something. And like, if we'd be getting frostbite and you, no rides. 
we, we would walk everywhere and we would never wear winter coats because we would want to look cool. We were all from Brooklyn and Queens. We wear these little leather jackets in the winter time with no gloves and we would walk everywhere. Yeah. Miles, miles at night. We'd walk to every neighborhood. My kids don't want, didn't want to go. They, would get, they didn't want to walk a block to get, Wait. They, would, they would walk one block. Two of my kids were so dysfunctional that <laughs> school started at 745. My daughter, Sinead, she wanted to be there early because she was like nervous. So I'd get her to school at like 715. And then my son, Peter, I would get him to school at 745 late. He made friends with the guy who taught shop or carpentry or whatever, sneak through the window and go in. I would take two trips. And we only have two blocks away. I was embarrassed, but I was like, you know what? This is fun. Gives me something to do. See the kids a little bit. <laughs> I'll see if I rub off on them. <laughs> Do they have children now? Do your children? No, my my my. I have a, I, my daughter. Um, she's actually a newscaster, Bernadette Hogan. Really? For New York oh my One. God. She was she was at the Post. She broke the nursing home story with Cuomo. She used oh, to be at the okay. Post, but now she's New York One. My son Peter, he's in this business. He's an actor, but he does music supervising and everything. He's twenty five, and Sinead is twenty two. She's trying to be an actress. She Both Peter and Sinead. Right. Yeah. Are they? Have they been in anything? Well, or? I wrote two movies: Shelter and Solitude, which came which came out in um, yes. I, October. I want. I'm going to watch that. Actually, yeah. I haven't had it. It's on my list. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. You'll it. like it. It, it. it did. We got picked up by AMC and Regal, which was crazy because we're independent. So Peter has a really big part in that. He's hilarious as the cop, Robert um, Patrick from the Terminator. He's plays my brother in it. Really? Yeah. Homer Simpson. Um. You know Dan Castellaneta. Yes. He plays, and it's a serious movie. But anyway, so they're both in it. And my daughter Sinead plays a hippie in it. Um, but he's done. They've both done other things as well. Where was it set? Where was it set? What we time? filmed it in upstate New York, but it's supposed to be Tennessee. Okay. And it's what about, was the time range it was set in? Was it set in its present um, day or it, it's present day because it was supposed to be about the beginning of COVID. And I own a bar. I'm like a loser wannabe, kind of like a cougar wannabe. No one will be have me. Mm -hmm. And I'm living in the past. I sang in. And Nash. you are totally not that. You are no. I'm hot. You're a hot. I'm smoking milk. hot. You I'm are smoking. Smoking you hot. Are. That's the problem. <laughs> But anyway, I play like this cougar wannabe and I live in the past. Like I sang in Nashville once in 1996 and it never made it. But I've got a bar where I'm like the only hit in town in this teeny tiny town. And then my bar shuts down. And I become a prison guard and guard this guy, Peter Macon, who's a fabulous actor. He's like a young James Earl Jones on death row. And Amazing. so it's about the last 10 days of his life. I can't wait to, I have it on my list. I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I'm going to try to watch it. I have to finish this one series that one, some of Just tonight. Favorite. Just watch it tonight. But I will. I'll try. I will. <laughs> I will promise you. All I'll right, tomorrow. <laughs> I'll text you and let you know that I Please watched do. it. I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. It's awesome. I I watched the trailer. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. See, so I said I definitely have to watch yeah, it. This looks yeah. so interesting. It, ha it has like 98% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is like. That's amazing. Yeah. So. That's Almost yeah. perfect score. Yeah, so now it's on Amazon, Apple, all that. So thank God. That's amazing. Yeah. Are you going to be writing anything else? Are you going to actually up for any other roles? Um, I wrote a play that hopefully is going to be done off Broadway um, next year in the, in next February, and it's about my Irish Catholic family. I love that. So we did a reading with Patty Heaton from Ever Loves Raymond, played my sister Mary. I love that. Margaret Colin. Uh, Lila Robs, we did this reading, and so it went. It's all the dysfunction. It's it, it's not just for like Irish Catholics because it's about anybody who has had a mother who's passed mm -hmm. and all the tension that comes with it. Yeah. It's like me coming up from New York. I'm like the selfish actress. They've been killing themselves working with my mother. You like trying, and we're screen drinking wine, saying the rosary, drinking wine, saying the rosary, fighting, whipping the bird. You know, so it's all that goes I with love that. that that end of life. That's a, I it's love a that. comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I definitely want to be invited to Oh, for sure you will be. I'd love to. For sure. I, I I admire you that you have gotten into now writing and producing too. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Too. That's my now my second life career, which I yeah. want to do. And I love that. I always, I was always loved the business. I always loved, you know, uh, uh, writing and, and I love the, the, um, that end of the business. So I'm, I'm very yeah, it's impressed. Funny. I, I never thought that I would produce or, or right, but then when my youngest was a junior, I was like, what am I going to do? Stay home and cook and clean? I can't do that. And I only work like half the year usually. So that's what really, it was, you know. It inspired you to do Yeah, it. exactly. That's amazing. Yeah, thank God. Look, But look what you've accomplished now. I, I, I nearly killed me. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't mind me asking, how, how old are you? I'm 165 <laughs> in the shade. Let's just say I'm not young. It's shocking. I am 62. You are? You don't know. No, listen, I just you don't went on tape for detail. something 
And you know, the beauty of like COVID and all that now is you can go on tape sometimes if directors want to see you. Yeah. I got looking at it. I was like, oh my God. I get a lot of scripts that'll say, she's seen better days. I'm like, <laughs> can somebody wipe that out? Okay. She has she has a lot of city miles on her face. Um, Life hasn't gone well. I'm like, all right, I'll take it. If I get and that's okay though. And, but that's okay to say that to you. These, I guess the people- I don't that, even care. Oh. I don't care. Now you laugh at it, but you laugh at it. Listen, my care. mother used to say, don't be looking in the mirror so much. And I'm, I'm like, I should have looked a little more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just telling Jeff that I, I um, herniated two discs in my back mm -hmm. about six weeks ago because I decided to start exercising like other people do. <laughs> and so I did Pilates and nearly like crippled myself. Why would you do that? I will never do it again. You, I'm like, there's a, too much of a contraption for me. The, do the, the doctor, I would definitely kill myself. The, on that the, thing. The, you know, doctors are very like, Serious. So the doctor's like, how old are you? I was like, 62. Which you can't believe when you say it out. You're like, how did that happen? And he's like, why don't you just walk or swim? And I was like, I don't like cold water. I'll try the walking. But I was like, <laughs> what was I thinking doing Pilates? That's a major contraption. It was insane. Yeah, I could see me like really Like your legs me. are over your head. And, and then and I was kind of like egotistical. I was like, look at me. <laughs> Pretty good. And then I was like, oh. Until, until you oh. hurt back. Remember James and the Giant Peach? Yes. When they take the skeleton, they go, crank, crank, crank. And he goes, that one felt pretty good. I was like, oh my God, I can't move. How stupid do you look to what, leaving a plot studio? So you're like, all the young girls are like, bye. You're like, mm. they're like, bye. And, and you get like, in the car, like, out, like, I get home, I get to my husband, I go, I can't get out of the car. It was horrible. You know what? But I, women in our age, I'm 53. But, oh, you're but, a baby. But I'm not, I'm not a baby. But, but there's a huge difference, I have to tell you. I, listen, from forty to fifty, I can oh, see this the big is... difference. But, but we, I feel. I mean, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh my god, who kicked my ass in the middle of the night oh. like when I was sleeping? Can I tell you? And it's crazy, like how much, like how all these aches and pains. Like, where did they come from? Well, wait happened? a minute, uh, you're a baby, and I'm not kidding you. I, I, thank you so I much had for this, saying this, that, but no, I and you look like, like a million bucks. Oh my god, I my love you. friend told me when she was fifty eight, and I thought that was ancient. Then I was 58, and then she was 62, and she's like, wait till this happens. I'm not kidding you. Dramatic things have happened. Everything has dropped. <laughs> I looked at my eye the other day. I was like, my eye, my one eye is closed. And I was like, I might be a candidate for surgery because to do my business, you have to have two eyes. So I was like, what? So I'm always like, what was that like? <laughs> I look terrible. I don't think you look terrible. I think you look oh. cute. You know what? We oh. just need a little refresh every once no, in a while. No, I need a renovation. This is a God's honest truth. <laughs> and and I feel like when I tell people this, they're like, that can't be true. You're probably making that up, but it's the God's honest truth. I was completely, had not been in touch with this friend of mine. You know, like during college, I mean, not college, grammar school and high school, you lose touch with some yes, of the mothers. Of, yes, and, But you still really like them. You think fondly of them. And um, some of them we don't. Some of them, <laughs> some of them you don't think so fondly. Some <laughs> No. So anyway, she writes to me and she says, I am at a fat camp in Tennessee. <laughs> Swear to God. Do you want to come? She has a lot of money. She goes, I'm at a fat, I'm like, why don't you go on a diet? But anyway, she's like, I'm at a fat camp in Tennessee and I met this woman and she looks just like you. And I was like, what the hell? So she sends me the picture and I was like, she does look kind of like me. <laughs> Poor thing. And the outfit, and I was like, who in God's name would ever, I was like, I like it was a good thing I wasn't driving. I would have gone right off the road. I was like, this is shocking. <laughs> people say, what's that wrong with people? People, uh, people are fucked up. <laughs> They're fucked up. That's really the truth, you know. But you know what? You have to laugh at people sometimes because I love a person like that. Because at least me they, too, right? Because I say things like I comes out. Sometimes it comes out the wrong way, but I don't mean it that way. Well, also gives you something to talk about because yeah. no one else is gonna be telling that. <laughs> like there's a little, there's a little lull in the conversation. You're like, what did you do today? You're like, oh, I, you know, had my nails I'm done. Uncomfortable. I'm silence. like, oh, I got a picture of a hideous looking woman. Well, someone said looks just and like me. Said, looks oh, just thank like you. me. And I was like, what the hell? What, did you tell a thank you? What did what I was you like, say? oh, ha ha. You like like you do the emo whatever those things are emoji of the ha ha when it comes up for the person crying. I am so bad at those things. That's the other thing. My kids are like, mom, stay off the phone. Stay off the phone because anything could come up. You know what I mean? Do you notice that when you text, like I don't know texting etiquette, like I. In the beginning with the whole thing with this capitalization of the letters was yelling at somebody like oh, yeah. that. But, but I am not a texter. So when I text, I when I'm when I'm I'm talking as I'm texting when I'm texting into the phone. Like I'm actually reciting what I want to write. Yeah. And it always comes off wrong and I seem to like insult people when I text them. I don't mean it to sound I know. off putting. M no, my son's always like, Mom, that sounds weird. But yeah. all, the other thing is <laughs> I learned how to voice text. But that's and I worse. forget to turn it off and then it's like 
could be like five hours of conversation and you're like, like a weirdo. Oh, and you can't cut and paste it and get rid of it. No, it you takes have forever to, to get rid of it. You just sit there forever and be like, yeah. I just did that the other day when I was driving. I forgot where I was driving. I was going somewhere. And I'm like, what the hell just came up? I know. And I almost sent it to somebody that I was talking about. Thank God. Because I was, I had that person. That's a thing. Yeah. I was talking about the person in their text, in their text. uh, Yeah. Where their name is. Yeah. And if I would hit send, they would know when I was talking about them. (laughs) Because I was voice texting them. I was having a fight with them. So I was voice texting them and I forgot to shut up. Then I shut up the voice text. But. I kind of didn't, and it was still on right. as That's I was talking to so them. Many after times. I had the fight, I was talking about them to somebody yeah. else, and the whole fight was in there calling them an asshole and everything else. And if I would have sent it to them, yeah, it would have been worse. Okay, this is a sad story, but also funny. So this movie, Shelter and Solitude, that that I was telling you about, that I did, that everybody's got to watch. I was then doing a movie in Ireland, and um, you've been and, to Ireland. I, I've been to Ireland. I, can't, I, I love, would love Ireland. to go to Ireland. Oh my god, I love it. So, but I was doing a movie in Belfast, which I'd never been to. This was last year. And most of the cast was British. Mm -hmm. And they were a little cold. And they were like, oh, hello, Siobhan. And they they didn't care about me. And I was like, huh. But anyway, so a couple of them, you know, they exchanged numbers just to be polite, but they really didn't want my number. (laughs) And so, so, so there's younger guys who are like, oh, isn't that nice? She's so old and we don't care about her. But anyway, so I, I get home and my movie comes out. And, um, sadly, one of my best friends who was from Saturday Night Live. Her name is Erin Frazier. She was Erin Maroney Frazier. She dated Chris Farley. She was the best. We stayed friends forever. And she was a producer on my film. She passed away so sad, suddenly, of a brain aneurysm. Oh. So, I am so bad with social media. Mm-hmm. I sent her, so I dedicated at the end of the movie, it says dedicated to Erin Frazier. And I sent it to my, what I thought were her children. Well, it was her children, but it was also the, somehow the people from England and about a hundred people. And I said, I dedicated this <laughs> oh to your mother. And, the, and they're like, and I didn't even know I did it. And about a month later, my son's like, oh my God. And I was like, what? And he's like, mom, you sent that. You said, I dedicated my film to your mother to about a hundred people. <laughs> so I had to write to individually, except for the three kids. I'm sorry, but I didn't to the, dedicate to the, your mother. To the British stuffy people. Oh, by the way, I didn't dedicate this mother to what this guy writes back. I was wondering because you've never met my mother. I was like, oh my god! This like it's like, dude, you for a month was a they've mistake. been thinking. Apparently, apparently that's not. how arrogant they are. Exactly right. That they for a whole month that, like, they thought it was I dedicated. A mistake. Like I met you, I didn't even meet you. I told yeah, you, you for even, five seconds. And you didn't even ask me to go out with a like. They'd be like, "Should we go out for a beer?" And they'd be like, "I was like, I felt like eighth grade." I was like, "Aren't you gonna ask me to go too?" I guess not. Oh, oh, I didn't care. These people like that suck. <laughs> we don't know. like them anyway. We don't like them anyway. Yeah. You know, and it's so funny that they say New Yorkers are, are so rude. Meanwhile, oh, I think we're the nicest people. The nicest. I think we're the we're the most abrupt people. Like Yeah, honest. Right, honest. Like you're like you're standing like like what I mean like this. I don't know if you've ever seen if you've ever seen Colin Quinn's um, Oh, I love Colin. I, I love him. I love Colin. When he talks about how New York got their swag oh, and their accent. Oh, oh. And he says, you know, New York is like, you know, even though we're abrupt, he's like, you know, I think it's rude if somebody stands online and they come in there and there's a hundred people online and this guy behind the counter, you're going, Hi, how are you today? How you doing? When there's fifty people online <laughs> having a full blown conversation <laughs> and then everybody just wants to get their coffee. Come it's, in and give me my give me my, give me my goddamn slice. And Exactly. Colin and Aaron actually was talking about Passway. They were very good friends. Aww. Same humor. We used to go see Colin's shows all the time. He's so funny. He's hysterical, He's but hyster- it's true. You know, he grasps New York perfectly. He per- perfectly. When he yes. talks about the Italians was my favorite part. Oh, oh. He goes, he goes, uh, Anthony, he goes, we uh, were playing in the street and he goes, and somebody hit Anthony's, Anthony's father's car or something like that. And Anthony's father came out and every, everybody knew what was going to happen to Anthony except for Anthony. <laughs> and he's like, and Anthony's father's going, all right, can't believe it. you were doing this to my God. Well, people it was from Italian New, opera. The, people from New Jersey too. Actually, this happened to me when I hurt my stupid back. I had to go to physical therapy. And I hear this guy, because they put you in a little curtain, so you're all in little different cubbies, and then the doctor kind of comes to you like a bird, like mm-hmm. giving a worm to each bird. And and I hear this guy say, Do you ever see uh the, do- <laughs> the documentary about the octopus? You know that one that's really popular now? It's called the octopus teacher. And the physical th- therapist is like, no. Wow. And he goes, you can have a relationship with an octopus. <laughs> and the, the physical therapist is like, no, you, you can't. The only person you can have a relationship with is your wife. It's in the Bible. And he goes, no, you can have a relationship with the octopus. He comes he comes in my copy and he goes, relationship with an octopus. He whips him the bird. <laughs> and he's his patient. <laughs> it's hysterical. But you don't see that kind of personality. You you go, then you start like heading west. 
Out of New York and New Jersey, it gets a little dull. Yeah, it does. And people in LA are, oh. they are the worst people. I I'm lasted sorry. there two years. I couldn't take it. You know why? Because everybody's transient there. There's like in the, yeah. right? Because well, they, they really care about themselves. Exercising. Yeah. <laughs> so they get up early. I'd be like, well, I'd get out of a show or something and be like, themselves. where is everybody? They're, they're they want to look good, so they're exercising. Yeah, that's it. It's very transient. They, they maybe know a friend for maybe a year or two. Right. How do you, I know friends for you probably too. That's right. For 40, 50 years, I'm still yes. friends with people. Yes, yes. I think it's just the way we were raised. Remember the Seinfeld when he says, somebody wants to be friends with me in his 30s, he's like, that's weird. Why would I be <laughs> friends with him in his 30s? I have my friends. You know? But I will say, you know, as I've gotten older, that what people that I've met now when I'm older, I feel like I can have newer relationships. Not everybody, because I don't like people. I don't like everybody. <laughs> You know, I'll say that. I, if I don't want to be your friend, I don't want to cultivate. I never wanted to cultivate friendships. I, I try to get rid of some cultivate. people out of my life already. But I'm trying to trim the fat. Yeah, exactly. Try to whittle things down. But I find that I find myself finding more like or people that I do like. So I have well, made a couple of adult friends in the last few yes, years. Yes, yes. I think too. Like I feel like it could be your. Friend. I was just going to say that, but I didn't right? want to be too much. I didn't want to be too forward. I would say we, we can could definitely be in a friends. romance together. Yes. Instead of a bromance, I'm in a home. And they say you got friends. <laughs> Me and Catherine the Duce are in a home dance together now, but you could be part of now. Oh, we I have love it. One. I love it. Hey, wait, I heard you're having Kathy Moriarty on. I am. And you know, we were both in um what the hell's the name of the movie I was in? With Jeff with Gerard Butler and Jennifer he's Aniston. So hot. Bounty Hunter. So she was awesome in it. So he's so smoking hot. He's so hot. Jesus. Well, we kissed. Wait, oh, uh -huh. was that tongue? I well, I'm going to tell you. So I was on the street. We were filming the streets of Brooklyn. This is like kind of the beginning of phones. And um, I, he was a bail bondsman and I was his secretary. So he comes home and I can't remember the character. So, but we, he sees me and we kiss and he goes and he takes my gum. I go, you took my gum. Anyway, I, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I kissed Gerard Butler. Maybe I've still got it. And my friend who's, her name is also Siobhan. She's mm -hmm. from Woodside, Queens. And it was summertime, so I'd gone upstate to Syracuse, and she calls me. She goes, Siobhan. <laughs> she said, they made fun of you on E! Entertainment. I go, oh, what do they say? She goes, do you want to hear it's kind of mean? I go, yes, tell me, because I think that, that's funny. Yes. She goes, they said, is that Siobhan Fallon Hogan kissing Gerard Butler, or is that Susan Boyle? Remember Susan Boyle? She was the really talented woman on, um, on British Got Talent. Yes, yes. And she could be, but. Yes. And and I told and she's Scottish and I said you Gerard, don't look like her. That's I love her though. Well, I'm sure she'd be insulted too. By the way, no, let's, let's, no, let, no, let, no. I'm sorry, but no. no but, so I said Gerard, they made fun of me, and I told him exactly what I just told you, and he said he's from Scotland. He goes, well, that's not very nice. <laughs> he's much better looking than you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, damn. It. But I got uh, to kiss him, so who cares? Right, exactly. You got to kiss him. Yeah, they didn't. That's and, why they were jealous. Yeah, yeah. My kids are and like, I bet she gave him a good one. In, oh, was yeah. I have tongue? got my my people used to call me lips because lips were not big lips were popular back in the day. You you no, they weren't. I play I, I played the French horn in high school, <laughs> and my mother had to have a talk with me. Did you do anything else with the French horn? Oh, come on, you dirty thing. Now we can't be friends. <laughs> <laughs> so so my mother was like, Siobhan, I was really pretty good at it. And so and I, I played it since fifth grade. No one plays the French horn. So uh, so ninth grade, my mother's like, I wanted to talk to you. She said, I ran an article. In Time Magazine, and it says that the lip, the muscle in your lip is called your embouchure. And it, if you play it a brass instrument, it can get really big. <laughs> so I think you should quit. So I did, because none of the boys liked me, so I quit. And then they still didn't like me, so I took it back up in senior year in high school. But that was really, I, too many years had passed, so there so went that. that, that, that was I thought I'd maybe be in the symphony or something. <laughs> but she, 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 she screwed up my career. Uh, all over that. And look, today you would be right so, in with everybody else. With right? Lips. I would like, probably be over, me. you know. Including me. Because, you know, I have to tell you, I, I, I don't know if you know that I own a few Medi Spas, that that's what I do. Oh. My, as my day job. Really? You do have beautiful shaped lips. I have to tell I you. I do? You do. You have a typical, like, heart-shaped, beautiful lip. I'll tell and you I'm what. I'm looking at them going, wow. First of all, I want to thank you because I got a lot, let's face it, I got a lot of problems. <laughs> I got I got about, I remember when I was like 25, I got headshots and the guy's like, who's French? He's like, let me tell you something. You look good now, but you're going to have a lot of chins. And I was like, that's impossible. And I'm like, eh? And your eyes are going to drop. So you should, you should, this is what he told me. He goes, at 25, you should suck the fat now. 
I should have listened. <laughs> I should have listened. I thought, shut up, you stupid Frenchman. Cut to I like 10 chins. How'd he know? I guess you get look at, used to looking at the face you, all the time. Yes. When you're looking at somebody's face. All the, but I would never tell somebody 25 years old that they need to Right. Give me hope. Come on. When you would, I just wouldn't do that. I would never but say my, that. If I, the, I, I do tell people that they need something, though. Oh, and, yeah. And I find myself staring at people oh, going, oh, oh, my God. Oh, well, I you must be. You must have a list for me. because you No, know, I do want to tell you, I would love to do some Botox on you. I know. See, this is, I knew you were going to say that. Because at home, I have a swim spa. <laughs> A swim spot. And so there's trees around it, but I have really bad skin. I couldn't find my um, hat one day, so I had this big Mexican sombrero because my father, my, my, not my father, well, that was a Freudian slip. My husband had a Cinco de Mayo party, so I just want to get out there, get in the swim spa, and be hide from my neighbors. And my friend Lisa goes, I see you over there, Siobhan. <laughs> and she was having wine with my other friend Lauren. And they go, we see you, get over here. So I go over, and they, they had, we're into the wine, and they go, we have been talking about you. You're an actress. You have a pitchfork. <laughs> you don't, and she goes, you don't need like 50 vials like us. No, you Just don't. Just do it right here. You don't need But if I start doing that, what's the rest of it? It's going to be like no, a whole it's, overhaul. it's just going to give you a zhuzh. That's it, a little zhuzh. I need zhuzh. a zhuzh. I need you a zhuzh. You need a little zhuzh. And I want to be the one to do it for you. I'm telling you, though. I would love to. I see films that I see people that get zhuzh. And I'm like, how are you going to play a period piece? You can't play something no, in 1950. No, no, that's true. And I do a lot of people who are in the industry, and that is true. You do, you don't need a lot, and I wouldn't make it. Would it be frozen? You're like, I'm just going to book you all day Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. No, it, I, it would actually <laughs> literally take like it's of ten minute, ten minutes, just a little something, a little zhuzh, a little couple of little pokes. That's it. I just know. I really should. Look, I'm not. I'm not frozen. No, you look good. Right. Yeah. And I could. I could. I could make it on screen because I do. When I notice people have bad Botox jobs, like some actresses, I'm like, oh, oh, I know. My God, they must have paid a fortune for that. And I they know. Look like shit. And their eyebrows are like this. <laughs> They're like, hello, I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Dillard. Like oh, my God. God. They look terrible. I know. And But I I got to take, I'll take it under consideration. Way. I'll well, take, take it. Take it on the table. I have a lot table. of, I got a lot of, I'm going to table it. I got a lot of things I got to work on. I've developed my inside, my outside needs some work. <laughs> I don't think you need anything out, out, out on the outside. I, and I think you're beautiful on the inside. Thanks. I do. But we all need a little zhuzh. I know, so, I know. And I, would, like I, I, know said, but I need a blowout, too. Oh, maybe I should start there. <laughs> this morning I said to my daughter, should I blow my hair out? I'm going on the thing. She goes, now nah, you're fine. I go, okay. I could blow out your hair for you too when you're in my yeah. office if you want. Yeah. I like to do, I like to get blowouts. I could do it. I'm so happy that you came here today. You Thanks for having me. This amazing. was a riot. This was a riot. Well, I hope you come back again. Especially yes. when you're, when, when you're, your plate comes out. Yes. And I want to have you come back after I watch the movie. Oh, I, please. I am going to do that. Yeah. And um, tell us what you're going to be, what you are working on now besides this and where everybody can find you. So you can find me on um, Instagram mm -hmm. at Siobhan Fallon Hogan. And you can find the movie at, at Shelter and Solitude. Same with Facebook. And I don't know how to do Twitter. I don't I'm tweet. sure people could find me there, but <laughs> it's not me. No. <laughs> it's that fat girl from Tennessee. <laughs> so anyway, so um, then I, I'm in a movie called Zombie Wedding that's coming out soon, which is crazy. Sherry O'Terry from Saturday Night Live plays oh, wow. a mom. And I play the mother of the girl, the zombie. <laughs> No offense to me. And um, and then I have the play that's coming out, and I'm also writing a, a film um, that was Patty Heaton from Every Love was Raymond's idea, and I I just sent her the final copy, so we'll see what happens. It sh I'm just exhausted just listening to what I'm she's accomplished. I'm sick, of my, I'm sick of myself. <laughs> I'm sure you are too. Siobhan, it was so happy. I'm so it was happy awesome. that you Thanks so much. And I want to know new romance with yes. you because I want to be your friend. I Absolutely. Love you. You're great. Thank you. You too. Everybody, please watch us on YouTube. Apple and Spotify. Watch the whole episode, not just the shorts. I know everybody loves the shorts because they have no attention span, but watch the whole, the whole episode. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you again for coming. Thank on. you. You were so nice. Bye.